brother Dan, who's six and a half years older than me, um, had donated blood for a long time. He's O negative, so he's a universal donor. And he was sort of my inspiration. I'm like, okay, well, if my brother can do it, so can I. So my brother has continued to donate blood, and now he's like almost a 11 gallon guy. So he is um, still an inspiration for me. Um, when my oldest daughter was born uh, 23 years ago, um, my, my wife, um, she lost a lot of blood after the birth and she needed a blood transfusion and that was a really scary time for me as well. It became very real very fast. So absolutely my brother and I compete on most everything, and, but this is one of those challenges that I don't think I'm ever going to um, be able to beat him at because he will not allow it. <laughs> It's actually a four-step process where the donor, when they arrive, they register. They give us their personal information, their address, phone number, email address. Then from there, we have them answer about 50 questions on a tablet that are more of a personal nature. From there, they go into our screening booth, and our screener will take their temperature, they'll check their iron levels, and they'll also check their blood pressure. And that's when the donor then proceeds to the bed. When they get on the bed, the draw time is usually anywhere between 8, 11 minutes. They basically do the donation on the bed and then the donor goes and sits and has their juice and cookies. They do need to bring a photo ID. Donors need to weigh at least 110 pounds, feel well the day of the donation. The units of blood can be separated up to three ways. We could take their red cells, their platelets, and their plasma and separate it three ways to help three different recipients. So your one unit can actually save up to three lives. My mom is a big believer in donating blood and actually plasma. Um, and um, so the day that I turned 17, I think it was within that week, um, we scheduled a blood drive at our church and that was that was the first time I gave. And um, for a very long time, every 56 days on the dot, we had our blood drive at the church. But for me, what brings me back is um, just knowing that um, often our blood centers are extremely low on blood. We have to collect approximately 600 units of blood each and every day of every day of the year. We don't take off for Christmas or New Year's. We love it when people step up when there's a tragedy and that's when it seems like we get the highest amount of donors. But we also want to remind each and every person that need is constant. We need it each and every day. 95% of our population is actually eligible to donate, but approximately 5% actually does. So we can't just rely on that 5% to make sure that our hospital shelves are filled because it is so important. We can't make the blood in a factory. We rely on human beings for us to be able to supply our hospital shelves. I think the biggest thing that people seem to talk about is that it's going to hurt. A lot of people are afraid of needles and they're asking, does it hurt? Oh yeah, everybody's nervous when they first donate blood. Everybody's nervous probably every time you donate blood, no matter how many times you donate blood. Um, it's not fun to be stuck with a needle. No one likes to be stuck by a needle, but... You just have to kind of get over it and know that you'll be okay and that you're doing something bigger than just getting blood. For me, I don't look at the process while it's being taken place and I've never noticed any pain or discomfort. It takes, for me, five, six minutes to give the blood, then it's out. Hopefully when, if I need it, and maybe I never will, um, it's gonna be there for me. I was 47 before I donated my very first unit and I'm embarrassed to say all the gallons I did not donate. Who knows, your blood that you've donated may have saved a life and that's amazing. It's just a phenomenal feeling when you consider what um, you know, giving half an hour to an hour of your life can do.